I'm joined live now from Canberra by the director of the Australian War Memorial, uh, Matt Anderson. Matt Anderson, thanks so much for your time. Uh, and, uh, and thanks for your speech today, the commemorative address. It was a great speech, to be honest. And you quoted the philosopher Arthur Danto. He wrote, We erect monuments so that we shall remember and build memorials that we shall never forget. That's the essence of today, isn't it? Of course it is. It's to make sure that all of those who uh, have worn this nation's uniform, um, the two million Australians who have worn this nation's uniform and, and the 102,800 who have paid the highest price, that they are remembered and they're remembered here at the Australian War Memorial. Uh, they have been since we opened our doors in 1941 and they will be uh, for a very, very long time. This is the place where, as a nation, we remember. Uh, you, you, you were reflected in the speech about a ceremony commemorating the 10th anniversary of the departure of the Mentoring Task Force One, and you were asked by one of the young veterans whether it was worth it. What was your response? Well, my response then and now is I had both the privilege and the perspective of serving in Afghanistan about five years after they left. And what I told him and what I experienced was that our allies valued what we did. In fact, they revered us. Um, our enemies feared us. And those Afghans that we worked with, that we supported, that we engaged with, uh, including the governor of Uruzgan, who, who personally asked me if, if the Australians could come back. And they needed to hear that. They needed to hear that because of their service, because of you know, the sacrifice of some from MTF1, um, you know, they had an enviable reputation in Afghanistan and they made a lasting legacy to those they served alongside. And I, I don't know whether that had the effect on, on the... I, th I think I described in the speech today as this young man with old eyes mm -hmm. uh, because he was still trying to make sense of it. And, and I think I, you know, it's important to recognise that's a very, very healthy thing to do. We should all be asking, what was it for? That's part of what we do here at the Australian War Memorial. We, we have to look at the causes the conduct and the consequences of every conflict or operation we've ever been involved in. And healthy countries, healthy societies and healthy veterans ask those questions. On this Remembrance Day, it has a, an added significance, of course, off the back of our longest war, um, but also 80 years since the War Memorial, that great institution, opened in Canberra. And just reflecting on some of that historic historical vision, um, we heard the narrator talking about our friends laying wreaths, and then the Japanese ambassador laying a wreath. Weeks later, we're at war with Japan. It, a reminder, I guess, of just how precarious peace is. It is indeed. And of course, we had the honour of welcoming the Japanese ambassador back here yesterday to lay a wreath along with the other heads of diplomatic missions. And a great credit to the current Japanese ambassador. He also attended uh, the Sam Darkin annual commemoration event organised by the survivors, the families of the survivors of Sam Darkin. And, and, you know, it's a reminder that all of us need, to, you know, to pursue with our best endeavours peace. And, you know, you Lord Gowrie, the, the Governor-General, Lord Gowrie VC, the Governor-General, who uh, opened the memorial 80 years ago, it's important to remember that in his speech... What he said was, when people leave this memorial, they must utter never again. And that's, again, a very, very important part of what we do. We need to learn from our mistakes. We need to work together. We need to build coalitions of like-minded, um, peaceful, pursuing nations to ensure that to the extent possible, it is never again, that we don't need to open any more galleries. And finally, it's a question that I've asked you before, and I know you get asked repeatedly, but there is a, a big renovation happening at the War Memorial. What do you say to those viewers today that might be concerned that it will lose its, uh, I guess, its solemnity that it has at the moment? Well, I would say to them a couple of things. The first thing, the thing that gives this memorial its solemnity, the thing that people associate with the act of commemoration at the Australian War Memorial is the commemorative area, the pool of reflection, the rolls of honour, the tomb of the unknown Australian soldier and they will remain untouched. That's the first thing I'd say. But then the second thing I'd say is that the reason the Australian War Memorial has such a place in you know, the nation's psyche is because it reflects the Australian experience 
of all wars. It's not just the First World War. It was conceived in the First World War but opened in the Second World War. And by 1952, it was agreed that it would commemorate Australian service and sacrifice in all wars. And we've done that very well up to and including Vietnam. And we've got work to do to honour the service and sacrifice of 100,000 women and men who have worn this nation's uniform over the last 30 years in places as far afield as, as Rwanda and Cambodia, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, uh, 62 peacekeeping missions and humanitarian missions. And their story should be told here too. And the nation should be proud of them when we tell it. And I might close with just your closing of your speech where you said... As the blast wall in Tarrant Cout once read, all gave some, some gave all. And it was duty nobly done. I think that's a terribly important thing to understand is, is everyone who served in Afghanistan in our most recent wars did everything that was asked of them to the best of their ability. They did it with compassion, they did it with distinction. And here at the Australian War Memorial, they will be remembered.